Hey, welcome to the second part of this mini live tutorial, where I'm showing you how to build a drum rack that will become a massive time saver in all of your future sessions. In the last movie, I showed you how to start building the rack, combining three separate instrument racks, each of which contained up to 128 different kicks, hats, or claps that were selected using the macro controls on the rack. This time, we're going to look more at processing of individual drum sounds by checking out how to beef up the kick. You may have heard people say you can bulk up a kick with a low-frequency sine wave gated by the kick. Well, we're going to use one of Live's synths to do a similar thing. I'm going to use analog, but you could use a different synth or a sampler with a sine wave sample loaded in if you don't have the suite. So I'm dragging analog to the chain list in the rack, underneath the three instrument racks I already dragged in, which will then create a new chain in the rack for analog. If you remember from the last movie, the chain list shows all of the separate channels running through the rack, which can contain entirely independent instruments and effects that run side by side, before being combined and sent to the rack's output. Also, each one of the chains is triggered by a different MIDI note, according to the pads here. So dragging analog to the chain list, rather than a pad, means it got automatically assigned to a pad. But I can change that by dragging it to a different one should I want to. Perhaps I'm using drum pads on my controller, which are assigned to particular MIDI notes, for example. So now I can use the MIDI note F1 to trigger analog. Let's see how to change this into a sine wave then. Analog has loaded up with a sawtooth waveform being produced by oscillator 1, with a brief amplitude envelope. So all we need to do is change the waveform to a sine wave, and then reduce its pitch. Somewhere around 50 Hz is a good idea, so you need to go between 2 and 3 octaves below middle C. The lower you go, the less noticeable the bass's pitch becomes. And if listening on a laptop speaker, then this will probably be pretty difficult to hear. Now, to make analog trigger at the same time as our kick, we simply go to the MIDI clip on the track, and you'll see we now have a row in the grid for analog. Then we just click on the kick drums note to select them all, and copy those notes up to analogs. Then, if we play the clip, you'll hear the difference, and see it on the track meter. What I'll do first is mute the hat and clap in the chain list, and then bring analog in and out. To make the effect more pronounced, I can turn up analog's level either on the instrument itself or on the chain. If you want to make analog's effect even greater, then you can increase the amplitude envelope decay on analog, so the tone takes longer to fade out. This is done by clicking on the amp section, after which the envelope appears in the central display. Then you can change the decay parameter by dragging the bottom of the slope like so. You can also make the effect less obvious here too, by decreasing the decay amount. Two things to be aware of when doing this. Firstly, your kick may already have a distinctive bass frequency in it. Some do, some don't. And if it does, then there's no need to add anything on top. Secondly, you should consider the pitch of the tone in relation to the track you're making, as you may want things to be in tune, so you don't get any conflicting bass frequencies. So that's another thing to watch out for. It is of course possible to make a kick significantly fatter simply through the use of EQ as well. And this is the great thing about drum racks. Each chain can have as many different effects as you like, which can be dragged to the chain list, the pads, or the mixer. If I click on the Unfold switch here, then you can see we have the chains displayed as mixer tracks as well, with the different mixer controls setting the chains levels as you can see. 
So another way of thinking of a rack is like grouped tracks, with the three instrument racks and analog grouped together on the one drum rack track. So you may prefer to do everything from the mixer here, when it comes to mixing and processing things in the rack, as it's easier to get your head round. To add an EQ to our kick, we just drag it to the kick track and it's there. Then we can use a low shelf to massively boost the bottom end, which is the way you can bring out the bass frequencies in the kick. Other things it's good to do are typically remove the frequencies you don't want, like the low mid ones, and boost the top end a fair bit too, as this is what brings out the transient, so the striking sound at the start. The scale parameter on Live's EQ brings the curve up and down, so you can use this to bring the effect of the EQ in and out. Consequently, it's a good one to assign to a macro on my rack, which is what I'll do, to macro 5, so we can use that dial to shape the kick that I choose. That's the end of this tutorial. In the next one, I'm going to continue looking at effects processing, showing you how to add width and fatness to your break. See you then.